How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, if you're taking on any DIY electrical projects around the house, there's a few basic tools you need, and one of those is an outlet tester. Now, most of us have a simple outlet tester like this, which has three LEDs and different combinations of LEDs give us feedback on the individual outlet. Now, over the past five years, things have really stepped up and we have a few versions from Klein Tools here to show you why you might wanna upgrade and what additional information will those give you to help you on your own projects, whether you're just installing a new outlet or you're trying to track down or troubleshoot a nuisance issue you've been having, upgrading your outlet tester is gonna give you that information you need to make that project that much faster. So let's jump into it. So we have a couple different outlets here. Is a GFCI that's correctly wired. And here's our basic outlet tester. Now this one's from Klein Tools, it's the RT210, but this is gonna work the same whether it's an Ideal or a Fluke or whatever brand you have. So you just plug that in and you're gonna get some combination of lights that indicate what's going on with the outlet. Here it is correctly wired, so we have two orange LEDs lit up, and then from this decoder here, you see two orange LEDs equals correct. The only other thing you can do here, we can use this button here to trip the ground fault current interrupt protection, and that's just detecting a difference between the smaller slot here, the hot side, and the larger neutral. When there is a difference there, a GFCI is supposed to trip. So we're just testing that, we're cutting that circuit between the hot and neutrals and making sure that this is tripping, which it does. So then you can just go ahead and make sure it holds reset and then we're back to correct. Now, why would you upgrade and what could you upgrade to? Well, the first one up would be this RT250 and it's about twice as expensive. Sometimes you get these in the kit or for eight or $10 you can get one. This one's usually more like 15 to $20. You're gonna have to get some AAA batteries that come in the kit but that would be one downside is you gotta keep your batteries in here working or this does not function. That is not the case with the lowest end RT210, but you're gonna get quite a bit more information. So if we plug this in, we're gonna be able to see the voltage on this outlet. Again, correct wiring, and it's gonna give us a green LED, single LED to say it's correct. If there was any sort of fault, it would not be a combination of LEDs, it would just be this one red, and then the readout would show us. I'll show you that here in a second. But we can also test the GFCI, and additionally, it's going to test and trip the GFCI, but it's gonna give us a response time showing us that response time, which you could check to ensure that the GFCI is meeting the manufacturer's specification and that the GFCI is still good. And then comparing one that is not correctly wired, if I plug in our standard RT210 outlet tester, now I have a red and orange. If I look at this table here, I see that the hot and neutral is reversed. So we have our hot and neutral side was reversed. And then if we stepped it up to the 250, we're gonna see that single red LED. We are gonna still read out our 118 volts here on the display, but now on the display, it tells us the hot and neutral are reversed. So we get that information from the display. So from my standpoint, why you would upgrade from the 210 to the 250 is for the benefit of that easy readout on your voltage. And also when you're tripping your GFCI outlets, you get that response time to make sure it's around a 10th of a second, which for most brands, that's gonna be what you're looking for as how fast that GFCI should trip. But wait, there is more. What about this guy? This is the ET270, which is kind of a combination of outlet tester and multimeter in one. So the ET270 comes with this convenient pigtail that plugs right into kind of your standard multimeter and then you can turn it over to the outlet test feature plug that into our correctly wired GFCI we got a green light and it's also confirming correct and we're getting our voltage readout we can go ahead and trip and again just like the RT250 we get the response time on this unit so we can go ahead and reset that and we'll see we're back to everything being correct. Now let's go ahead and test it where we knew, know we have a reversed neutral and hot. And we have that light turning red now showing fault and then that we have our hot and neutral reversed. So pretty handy that that comes built in with your overall similar capability to the RT250, but you also have additional multimeter functionality built right into the same unit. So then you can just swap out two standard test leads here for your red and your black or positive 
the negative. Plug those guys in. And then this is gonna be kind of a lower end multimeter. You're not gonna have all your different capability, but we are gonna have voltage AC, voltage DC, continuity check, and then also a resistance check. In addition, over on the other side, we do have a nine volt battery in the 1.5 volt. So that'd be your double A's, triple A's, C's and D's, where you can test a battery quickly to see if it's within the ranges of what you're expecting. So you just match up your red lead to your positive side, black lead to the negative side, and then we can see that reads out just over nine volts. So if it's within 10%, so that would be 8.1 volts, you know you're still good and have some juice left in the battery. And then the last one we'll look at is the RT390, which is actually a circuit analyzer. And let's show you the additional features that this is gonna have that none of the previous ones did. So we'll plug the circuit analyzer in here. And right when you plug it in, you will, even before it's powered on, you'll see a little red energized icon here on the bottom, which will indicate, okay, we have power at this outlet before we even turn anything on. And then you'll go ahead and start it up. And this one, you can just tell by the startup splash screen, it has a lot more intelligence and actually a small computer inside, opposed to some of the other outlet testers, which are very simplified and can be as simple as just some LEDs and some resistors. So now with the circuit analyzer, what you'll get in addition to what we saw before, with our GFCI test, we can go ahead and trip, and that's gonna give us not only the trip time there, but also how many milliamps did it take to trip? So most GFCI outlets would wanna be in the five to nine milliamp range to trip. So this can confirm that. And then also we're looking to be at that 100 milliseconds or under in terms of how long did it take to trip. So then we can go ahead and go back to our screen. We can trip that and we're back. Now, if we had an AFCI circuit, we could also test that here and get similar metrics. The 30 milliamps isn't really what I'd be testing for GFCI. On residential, again, we're going to the five to nine milliamp range. Now this load test is pretty interesting. We can do a load test on this circuit at this outlet, and that will give us a full breakdown. The top is 12 amps, the middle is 15 amps, and the bottom is 20 amps. And what this is giving is what is our losses when we load up to those different amperages and then it will color anything over 5% with red. So if we had some wire nuts that are loose or connections in a, a junction box downstream that were giving us issues and causing more resistance and dropping our voltage, we would see that here, we could go make corrections in that circuit, retest and see if getting our outlet voltage back into range. And then you can see the display is just much brighter. You have some color. It's easier to read in full wording here and post abbreviations for correct wiring. And we can also test out our reverse hot and neutral. So you can see the display is just gonna be easier to read overall for those that are doing a lot of testing and troubleshooting, probably on a daily basis. So right below the video in the description, you'll see links for all these different testers for your reference if it'll help you out. And then also let me know in the comments, which one are you currently using or which one are you gonna go ahead and purchase and are you a professional or just a DIYer? From my perspective as a DIY homeowner that takes on quite a bit of electrical projects around the house, a normal outlet tester like the RT210 is a no-brainer that comes with a lot of different kits if you're getting a non-context voltage tester. I think you could justify upgrading to the RT250 just to get that convenient readout and then also a little bit more features in testing your GFCIs like how long did it take to trip. But if you do not have a multimeter, you don't already have a multimeter or maybe even a clamp meter that you use for any of your testing, I do like the ET270 because I think it gives you most of the features that a homeowner would need from a multimeter perspective, but also that convenience of the outlet tester with the display showing you the voltage and you get those nice solid connections by plugging in the pigtail that comes with the kit. But hopefully this information helped you out and if you guys need a little bit more help on multimeters and how to use that as a DIY homeowner taking on electrical projects, you can check out this video right here. We'll walk you through all the basics so you'll be able to fully leverage your multimeter. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.